Hello, everyone, and welcome back to the GSMC Fantasy Sports Podcast, brought to you, as always, by the GSMC Sports Network. Hope you enjoy that first segment. Before we get into our second one of the day, I do want to remind you yet again to consider liking, following, and subscribing to the show and the podcast as a whole. Also, if you do feel so inclined, and you guys have been doing an excellent job of this, Make yourselves available to the Super Chat, Super Stickers, and Super Thanks features here on YouTube. Great way to interact with the show. Great way to get your comments, questions, concerns on air as well. And I'm really happy to see you guys wish to be involved as I love interacting with you all. But our second segment of the day, as Andre kind of alluded to in his uh, kind of foreboding comment about Jamar going under, I actually do not have a Jamar Chase prop bet in front of me right now to present to you guys. But I think that it could be true. I think that a lot of people underrate this commander secondary, and a lot of people underrate the situation Jamar Chase is in. So who knows? But the ones that I do have... Just ones that I was perusing through and thought would be very interesting. Some are a bit bolder than others. So without further ado, let's jump right into our prop bets for tonight's game. Let's start off with a simple one, actually. Wrong one. Yes, this is the right graphic for this uh, particular segment. Josh Allen over 225 plus pass yards. And at minus 135, it is kind of a bold prediction because, like I said, Jamar, I mean, Josh Allen isn't expected to do much in this Bills offense outside of protecting the football and making the right reads. But I think in time he'll understand that the Jags defense is going to challenge all of his receivers. And if, as Andre kind of alluded to, he does have to escape the pocket, he is going to have opportunities to extend plays and he's one of the best at it. And I think the screen action game will also work very well for him. Chase a very underrated receiver out of the backfield. And like I said, this could be a big game for Dalton Kincaid tonight. I think that Josh Allen will be very timely in how he decides to throw the football to Kincaid. As Andre says, I can't find a Jags bet I like to pair with a Josh Allen free square. Well, this could be your Jags bet for you tonight, Andre. As I have... Oops. I might have to skip. I didn't include it actually in my graphic, but I do have Trevor Lawrence under one and a half pass TDs. Unfortunately, I don't have a nice graphic to go with it, but under one and a half pass TDs and minus 180. Yeah, I just feel like this is one of those games where the Bills' defense will really show its might against a really overmatched receiving core. Yes, Brian Thomas Jr. has some flashes of the brilliant wide receiver he can be for Trevor Lawrence. But right now, it's just like limiting damage control. This offense is like one game away from going completely off the rails. And I did warn a lot of you about this Jags offense and why I didn't like it. And it just seems like the speed and elusiveness isn't translating to Trevor's game. I think that they're too concerned with getting guys vertical and trying to create explosive plays out of nothing when in fact you need various routes to really help Trevor Lawrence go through progressions, determine who's open and things of that nature. Because right now, I just think that they're not necessarily utilizing the different traits these wide receivers have in the best way, and that could punish them. And I think that we'll see Trevor Lawrence underperform yet again tonight's game with under one and a half passing touchdowns. So, Andre, hope that helps for you. Very interesting bet. I love the Josh Allen free square for you. But the next bet, how about Keon Coleman? In this game, I think a lot of people are underestimating the value he might be able to add to this Bills offense, especially when Josh Allen might be forced out of structure. Coming out of college, coming out of Florida State, well, the thing I loved about Keon Coleman is not just his big frame and how he used it to make contested catches, but his route running abilities. Knowing when and where he needs to go to a certain place in the field, adjusting his route as Bigums. A new commenter enters the chat. Traded neighbors for Bijan in a PPR league. Thoughts? Um, 
that is a very ambitious trade because I actually have not liked Bijan as a fantasy asset for the first couple of weeks. Whereas Malik Neighbors actually had a fantastic game, and I'll talk about him a little bit later in the show. As Andre says, damn, you think Yoshivas has a big game tonight? Yes, I'm very high on Yoshivas. I will get to that prop in a second, but back to Bingham's point. I think that that trade is a little bit ambitious, asking a lot of Bijan. I like that he's been getting more touches in this offense under Raheem Morris, but these touches really haven't translated to much. And it's kind of weird because when Tyler Algier comes into the game for Atlanta, he seems like he has a lot of space in front of him to run. Whereas Bijan, I don't know whether it's the, 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 the running scheme that they've implemented or not, but it's just not as effective for him as it is for him. As Andre says, Daniel Jones loves neighbors, force feeds him. So yeah, I think that trading neighbors for Bijan is a little bit skeptical, especially when Malik Neighbors has a lot of potential in terms of target share and in terms of touchdowns in that giant system. So, I think so. And as for Yoshivas, we will get to him, I promise, in a minute. But Keon Coleman, over two and a half receptions. That's a great route runner. Will keep this offense ahead of schedule, most importantly, should things go a bit awry for the Bills. But I don't think it will. That being said, it's a nice little bet to consider. Coming up next, though, Jaden Daniels. Let's talk about Jaden Daniels because... A lot of people might not have a commander's bet for tonight because a lot of people might not like a lot of commander's bets in general. But Jane and Daniels, this one also feels kind of easy. Over 25 plus rush yards. And at minus 115, I think that in order for this offense to have success tonight, their running game is going to have to be clicking immediately. I think about the Bengals' run defense. It's one of the most underrated in the league. And it's very good at going sideline to sideline to stop players. I love their edge rushers. Their linebackers are not necessarily the best, but they are very good off-ball linebackers. But Jane and Daniels, in many different ways, if there's one silver lining to his performance for these first three weeks, it's his improvisation. And we know that he has the wheels to get out in space and be effective for the commanders. So if the commanders you know, are down a lot, or if they're trying to get back into the game, then Jane and Daniels, his legs will definitely be a factor. So that seems to be an easy bet in the Commanders Bengals game if you're looking for a little nice Commanders bet. Then let's get to the man that was just mentioned, the man of the moment, Andre Yoshivas, the presumptive wide receiver two tonight, maybe because of the T. Higgins situation, but. If he is, as Andre says, Bijan's getting outscored by second and third round running backs, I don't know what to think. Yeah, he's just been very disappointing this season. Yes, there are opportunities for him this offense. Yes, there are touches, but they just haven't translated. Last night, I was very frustrated by the lack of um, breakaway ability that he was limited to in this game because there were moments where Algier had running lanes that he utilized very well. And there were moments where Bijan kind of had the same running lanes, but was not to little effect. So I don't know what to think either about how the future of Bijan Robinson this season has going forward. But go back to Andre Yoshivas right now. As Andre said, he's just missing touchdowns. That's the, that's the, that's the thing. You know, When you bring in someone like Kirk Cousins to run your offense... You were always asking a lot of different weapons to make themselves utilized in. It's very hard if you're the running back in the backfield in the situation when you have guys like Drake London, Darnell Mooney, who's been a big surprise, and Kyle Pitts, who all want to get in on the action. So it's kind of hard, but it's kind of frustrating, especially that because Algier seems to be playing better than him. So it is kind of a weird situation where. Bijan might not be as effective, even though he's getting the touches he desires in that offense. But like I said, I want to get to Andre Yoshivas. It's my ambitious bet of the night. Over 40 plus receiving yards, a plus 205. It's asking a lot of the young man. His two catches, yes, there were touchdowns last week, but they only went for seven yards. They were both in the red zone. But this game, look for him to be a nice little weapon. I think that, yes, 
he does kind of project to be more of a red zone threat for as long as they're asking him to, you know, hold down the wide receiver 2-3 role. But I think at the end of the day, the bottom line is Joe Burrow wants to have a target for every situation. Whether it's in the red zone, whether it's in the open field, he always wants to have another target. And if you just chase, then I don't think the offense will be as effective. So look for him to target Andre Yoshivas a little bit more in this game. That being said, I think that in terms of both of these games, and the reason why they're very weird to bet on is that, for example, the, the Commanders-Bengals game is just one of those games where you have to really be confident in the matchup that you're looking at to say, okay, I want to bet on this game. Because even I'm a little bit skeptical about the Jaden Daniels, but even though he's a fantastic Russian quarterback, I'm a little skept- I'm especially skeptical about the Andre Yoshivas one because there are just so many questions about the Bengals' wide receiving core now. Whereas the Jags Bills game, it seems pretty clear cut, right? You know Josh Allen's probably going to have a big game. You know Trevor Lawrence should continue to struggle. You know that I didn't even mention Khalil Shakir. I just want to mention this final bet here. Khalil Shakir, I predict, will have over 70 plus receiving yards and plus 295. Be quickly becoming a wide receiver one. That's the reality the situation. If a lot of you drafted Keon Coleman, it's not looking like he's going to be a receiver one in this system, unfortunately. But, like I said, it just seems very clear cut with the Commanders Bengals one could veer off in many different directions because we know we have exciting players on both sides of the football, but what with the lack of information about the status of what the commanders could be and the whole situation on the Bengals in terms of all their kind of turmoil externally, then this game could be one of those games where you might have want to sit out because you might be tempted to make a bet you wouldn't otherwise want to make and then it's not going to hit for you in that regard. So, make of these games what you will. Take my predictions as with a grain of salt, but let me know what you think in the comments because both of these games are very hard to bet. Andre, I like saying Jamar is going under. Very bold prediction. Could hit, I think, but you never know. But coming up next, we transition a little bit to the world of college football where I go over my college fantasy stars from this past week and a lot of interesting games going on in college football right now. So, I just want to touch on them a little bit, but we'll be right back after this short break to go to that transition. Looking for your 